Hey there, my name is John Siskovich. I'm the founder and creative director here at Farm Marketing Solutions. I'm also a farmer in Western Connecticut. And as a human being, as a, as a father and a head of a household, as a head of a, or a partner in a larger company and the founder, creative director, or whatever that means of Farm Marketing Solutions, I have three sets of books to take care of. And uh, we're going to ask me anything today. I got a question from Matthew Goff. Um, and he says, hey John, I would like to see a video on how you track your expenses and incomes. My wife and I are starting our first full year of raising and selling animals for meat and we're looking into a program to help track our finances. Thank you. So I have three different areas here. We're gonna talk about what I use in each, how I handle each one real quick. You know, I'm gonna go, it's, it's a short video, but we're gonna cover a lot here. Um, and then just some general good good practices going forward. Thank you, Matt, for writing in. He Matt went to the homepage of the website uh, and went down to the bottom and then filled in his answer. And uh, here we are doing an AMA video. So my, let's start with the personal finances. Now, Kate and I have a budget. We are a family and we have one daughter. And the big news is that we have another daughter on the way coming in May of 2019. And that is exciting and it freaks me out but I'm a little less freaked out because we have a budget and we have a plan and we know what's coming up and barring any tragedy, we should be okay on our current trajectory and I know all that by crunching the numbers. Now, how do I crunch the numbers? Well, every month we have a certain amount of income that we can expect coming in and we have a certain amount of expenses that we can expect going out and then we plan for disasters and we do all that initially, we did all that initially on a Google spreadsheet where we just had a Google sheet and I created some simple, simple math equations. Like I'm not a math guy. Um, where this was our income, this was our budgeted expenses for the month. They're the, they repeat month to month. You'll find a lot of repetition in your expenses as you go through this. And you'll realize you spend roughly this much money on gas every month, roughly this much money on groceries. And uh, you can start to budget for that stuff where if you're like, oh, if we shave this money off here, here, and here, we can allocate it to these things. And you'll find if you run your family like a business, then it is a little less stressful because you know what's coming and you're not stressed about money and like, turn the heat down in the house. You can be like, you know what? While and out, we're $10 above budget this month. Crank that heat up for a day. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so we, uh, we started out with a Google sheet and some simple equations, and then we moved over to YNAB. You need a budget. Um, YNAB, probably .com. They have, it's free for a little while for you to like, they, they get their hook into you, and then they charge you on a month to month basis. Because it is so important and because they add a level of convenience above my normal spreadsheeting that I do on the, on the Google Sheets because things can kind of auto sync with my bank so I don't miss anything and I can share it with Kate a little bit easier and it's just great. Uh, so we pay monthly to track our expenses, our income and expenses for our house with You Need a Budget. And they have videos on what it is and how it works so I'm not going to go into that. Now for the farm brewery, the farm and the brewery and the distillery that I'm a part of, we use QuickBooks. Now we're not in love with QuickBooks, but for now it does all the things that we need it to do. It's a very complicated business setup where we have a farm with all of its agriculturalness. We have a brewery in Connecticut with all of its uh, booziness and all that federal nonsense and statewide nonsense that goes on with having alcohol production. And then we have a distillery in New York, so we have a whole other state uh, with a distillery with a whole different business plan uh, that has its own different set of federal laws and income and expenses that all have to be tracked through this one system. When we use QuickBooks, and I've done some videos in the past uh, that have talked about QuickBooks, but again, there's 101 videos on YouTube, maybe a thousand or a million and one uh, videos on YouTube on how to use QuickBooks, how to set up your chart of accounts, um, and then it, it's all gonna lead to my advice at the end of this book, or the end of this video. And then for farm marketing solutions, finances, you're watching a video, it's on YouTube, I earn money from making some of these videos. I also have published a couple books and I have some swag, uh, which is great. I do have an income from farm marketing solutions and I track that through what my accountant recommended, which was Zero Accounting, X-E-R-O. And it's a, just another piece of accounting software. They have a bunch of tutorials online. So I use uh, You Need a Budget, QuickBooks, and Zero Accounting 
all of the concepts are similar, but the frameworks in which they deal with those specific areas of my life are different enough and kind of specific enough that I derive benefit from using those three different programs. Now, all of this said, I am not a certified public accountant. I'm not a CPA. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't take all of your advice from a guy on YouTube. Plus, I didn't give you in the short video all the practical advice you're gonna need to set up your chart of accounts, uh, start actively assessing your income and your expenses, and those are fixed expenses, capital expenses that you're gonna amortize over time. For all of that, you're gonna need a good accountant. And it takes money, It, to, it you have to spend money to make money. And having a good uh, public accountant, I'm gonna give a nod to accountant Mike, who's my accountant. Uh, you may have heard that name before. He's also uh, Austin's friend from Homesteady. Uh, he's just the best guy in the world. And uh, I have Mike on board because there are questions that I just don't know and I don't have time to look up and I build it into my budget to allocate a certain amount of money to be able to hire Mike to get his time so that I'm making the right thing because a thousand dollars saved on my taxes is well worth a two hundred dollar consultation session with Mike. So there, there's cost benefit analysis to going with whatever route you want to go in. And if you think you're smart enough to do all of your own accounting, good for you. I am not. So I hire an accountant. But when you hire an accountant, you can't expect them. They don't have a, ma a magic wand and a crystal ball. They need stuff to work with. Accountants can manipulate numbers in a way that is beneficial to you that works with inside the law so that you don't get audited or in trouble down the road. So working with an accountant, <clears throat> you need to save your receipts. You need to track what money you spend on what things in your life. Separate your house expenses from your business expenses and anything you ever spend on the business for your farm needs to get logged. Take a picture of the receipt on your freaking smartphone, log it into a folder. Uh, if you do nothing else, um, once you get good, get into the, some of this accounting software work with your accountant because a lot of these softwares have an accountant access where you can send them uh, the ability to view and edit some of your files, uh, which makes it easier to work together. But all of this just as a plug to find a local accountant that you can go to and meet in person and it will make your life so much better. I don't know what I would do without the finance people in my life because this has not been easy for me. It has been something that I've had to figure out along the way. Where this can really save your butt, and here comes into the personal story at the end of this video. I'm not gonna do it on every video this week, but this one happens to pertain to what uh, I, I did in the past. I, uh, my first year farming, alone, with nobody else, uh, it was 2013, and I was starting a pastured chicken and egg, or chicken and herb CSA, where you get a chicken a week for 20 weeks and a bunch of herbs to go with your chicken. I also grew and sold some other stuff on the side. Going into it, I did budgets where I figured this is how much I'm gonna make per week on extra chickens, this is how much the CSA is gonna gross, and I got into my season and I look at my numbers for a little while. And I got halfway through my season and my daughter was gonna be born soon, Mabel, my first daughter. And uh, I was like, it's time for me to like buckle down and go over my numbers because I have the kid coming, we have a major life change, and I need to know that everything is gonna be okay. So I ran the numbers and said, oh, I'm gonna run out of money uh, by the winter. So I need to either find a job or find another income source. And I did both. Uh, I got a job as a farm worker turned farm manager turned part owner of a farm brewery, which worked out just like fairy tale ending, man. I don't even know how I landed this. <clears throat> but I also knew that I would need some income on top of that just to make sure because Kate was gonna need to take time off to have a baby and then be home for a while. So uh, Mabel was born in July and I had started just before moving my farm from one area of uh, uh, town over to this farm. I was raising chickens, uh, we had Mabel, Mabel was born and then it was like, I need to figure this out. And what I did is uh, I started talking about chicken tractors on my website because I wanted to sell chickens for meat. And I started to get a bunch of internet traffic of people who wanted uh, the designs for the chicken tractors that I had built for my farm. And I, I have a design background and I was like, this is a perfect opportunity for me. So when Kate and Mabel would do uh, almost last feeding of the night, um, 
been breastfed for a while because that's I comfortably talk about it on the internet with you guys and that's fine because it's natural. Um, uh, Kate and Mabel would do a feeding. Mabel and Kate would go to bed and then I'd have like a two, two and a half hour stretch before Mabel would wake up again for her final feeding before she had like kind of a good four hour stretch uh, of sleep through the night. She didn't sleep a lot when she was a kid. Four hours was generous. <clears throat> so in between that, those two feedings, I would uh, write furiously on my computer. I would email friends to help me with some design. Uh, I was writing this book and I wrote out and drew out the plans for my chicken tractors that I now still use on my farm and now people, the book has been sold on five different continents. And that first book, uh, writing that, publicizing that, or publishing that, uh, getting it out and selling it as a PDF on my website helped financially us get through that winter and I wouldn't have known that I needed to make that step and do that hustle if I hadn't been tracking my finances to begin with. So sometimes doing the drudgery, making it fun, finding a way to track your finances can save you because without that uh, hustle, without that decision, without publishing that book that first year in 2013 when we desperately needed the money, uh, I may not be standing here on YouTube today, which is just a crazy thing to think about for me. So I know this video is running a little long and I, I'm sorry if I yammered on in the story, but it should drive home a lesson that you need to do accounting, you need to get help with it, and you need to be diligent about tracking your data. I will do more questions about this, or I will do more videos about this in the future. Please write in with your business and finance questions. I will bring on experts if I cannot answer them myself. I know I'm signing myself up for some, ex for some extra work there, um, but hey, that's what this is all about. We're growing the community together because if I can't answer it, I know that I wanna know the answer if it's a good question about agriculture. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, I will see you out in the field.